and I've been living down around DC for a while, so I've kind of gotten used to the uh, Washington woes that everybody around here has. So, kind of excited to give them another bad weekend. I will but, say though, I'm excited for that organization's fans to be trending in the right direction. At least, like I don't know, I don't. Somebody called me cocky because of how I felt about the game with the post that we put out, but. I feel pretty good. Like the Bills are a better team. They should go in and win this game. But the, if I'm a Washington fan, which I am friends with some, they got to feel pretty good coming out of this post Dan Schneider, terrible, like almost embarrassed to be a fan of the commanders slash Redskins over the last few years. So um, at least they're trending in the right direction, regardless of the outcome for this weekend. Yeah, it's definitely cool to see a franchise turn around like that. Um, especially one that was so maligned off the field, you know, it's like, I, I feel for those fans because this, the national conversation around their team for several years now has been pretty negative and it's not even all to do with what they're doing between the lines, right? No, their so. owner was like evading subpoenas out on a yacht in the ocean, like international waters. Like that's, that's bad. Right. I <laughs> just got, like, yeah, not kid, good, Bob. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we we've had some accusations of the Bills owner and there's been some different things throughout the years, but he's never like been out on his yacht evading legality or like some like big legal trouble, right? So um never a good sign. And I think this is a huge loss for all those people that are anti culture and anti change of culture, right? Like there was a really corrupt, toxic culture within that entire organization and it bled through to the football field. Like you saw the dysfunction play out year in and year out throughout that organization. And I think only more is going to come of it as we see investigations and get emails that come through like the, that John Gruden stuff. The reason John Gruden got fired was in association with some of the emails that were found from the investigations into people at the Redskins. And when that came out, there was a lot of talk that, yeah, that John Gruden stuff was bad, but that's not anything compared to what they're actually holding on to and are going to present in court. And so good for the the organization to be able to move on from that and just shed that because no fan deserves to be almost handcuffed and crippled by your owner, right? Like it's not your fault that some dirtbag owns your favorite team. Yeah. I mean, you don't even know what the team's going to be called from year to year. Right. right? Like it's like, so yeah, it's, it's, it seems like things are trending in the right direction, like you say, and that's a good thing. And, and so let's talk about this matchup a little bit. Anyone can come again, come in and comment. I would love anyone's takes on this on, on the matchup show. Chris, you were there with me co-hosting, which again, I appreciate you stepping in for Greg this weekend and anyone that hasn't My had a chance to dude. listen. Yeah. Anyone that hasn't had a chance to listen to it, that content will be good here all the way up till Sunday. So make sure you get a chance before the game, check that out. And really everyone uh, busting their butts on the cover one sports network, man, we have so many shows every day uh, and, and it's good content. I'm uh, in on the YouTube comments all the time. And not only is the content good, but those conversations in the YouTube comments are great. So make sure you're checking everybody out and following someone um, in the, uh, someone in the chat real quick on the, uh, the matchup show on Wednesday was like the, the film room has become a tough act to follow for like, well, <laughs> it's always been a tough act to follow, but yeah, like Eric and Ant have been killing it this year. Oh, absolutely. And yeah, no, it's always been a tough one to follow, but yeah, they're, they're killing it. Really. Everyone is. I I'm so proud of all the content we're putting out, but you know, back to this game, I sort of compared it to the feeling I had going into the Raiders matchup show. In that, like, yeah, this is a good team. Yeah, they have some good players at the top that present some problems. But ultimately, I just think that this Bills team's too good. And this should be another one of those games that you just go in and handle business. I'm still chalking up the Jets as a bit of an anomaly, a blip, a team that plays us tough. They're built to beat us. I can live with that. These other teams, I think these are the teams you just are supposed to run through. And I expect similar results. I don't know if it's going to be 38-10 to 10 or that type of blowout. But I don't expect it to be a challenging game for fourth quarter. I think if the bills come in and do what they do with their roster, they should be able to just have this one at an arm's length the whole way. Is that disrespectful to this commander? See, I know they got talent, but am I way off on that? Um, I don't know if I use, use the word disrespectful. I mean, it certainly seems that way on paper, right? I mean, look, it's in the NFL. There's a lot of parody. It's not, you know, any team, right. The whole, any given Sunday. I mean, you've heard it a thousand times, but Totally, um, it's a matchup league, so different right. matchups present weird, right? 
Yeah. But I mean, you know, I think if uh if we can slow down their pass rush, right? We can win the trench battle and we can, you know, make it difficult for Howell. Like I think that, you know, pass rush on both sides of the ball is going to be key, right? Slowing theirs down and being effective with ours. Um that might be totally. how how we prevail. And we saw uh in this last week that scheme can do some of that to help too, right? Like we're not going to probably be able to give as much physical personnel attention to any one particular guy as maybe you are against a team like the Raiders where they're uh, obviously their pass rush is elite, but you really got to focus on Max Crosby the most. You're going to have to focus a little bit more, but seeing what Ken Dorsey, Josh Allen, getting the ball out quick, uh, seeing the sort of weakness right in the middle of the field for the commanders and, and the trend of Dalton Kincaid as he's been able to kind of find his role in this offense seeing how they work the middle of the field here this past week, like that just makes me think there's going to be too much firepower on the bill side. If Josh Allen can just continue to get the ball out quick, even when the Raiders were getting pressure on him, it wasn't the chaotic sugar high Josh only when needed, but it was still evading making the offensive line look better than they actually are. And I expect to see more of that. Like there's this idea that because the jets find success against the bills and they're able to get pressure and you see Josh get hit a lot that somehow the bills perform bad when you pressure them and all quarterbacks are like worse. You want to get pressure on quarterbacks that matters, but historically Josh is still pretty freaking good against pressure, whether it's blitzing or any kind of pressure, like he still does better than his peers when it comes to that type of stuff. So I expect him to still do well in the face of pressure this weekend. Yeah, totally. And yeah, you, you talked about the middle of the field. It was cool having Josh Taylor on the matchup show, and you can tell us about, you know, a little inside baseball as far as uh, their linebackers are concerned. I mean, they've got Jamin Davis, and he's been playing uh, pretty well, but Cody Barton um, has not looked good the first couple of games. So, I mean, if there's an area of that Washington defense that you can exploit, um, it's the middle of the field, and the Bills, with all of their um, upticks in 12 personnel usage, I mean, they, they are set up nicely to exploit that middle of the field. Yeah, totally. And the way the run game looked a week ago, right? Like if you can get that going and it wasn't just James Cook ended up being the guy that everybody's talking about. And, and it obviously for obvious reason, he had a great game, man. I love what I saw from Harris and Murray and that the usage in the red zone for Murray was really nice. Um, you sort of saw that the, the room as a whole bit as advertised, right? Like everybody's role, seems to play out exactly as the bills, why they got those players and why we, what we expected them sort of to be able to do. And you get that type of run game. And that also takes some of the pressure off Josh Allen and also the usage from the rainbacks backs in the passing game. Those are the things that, you know, can sort of negate the aggressiveness of this defensive line. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the, the running, the rushing um, efficiency has gone up quite a bit. Uh, it's just like you say, I mean, it takes the pressure off of Josh. Uh, I mean, yeah. certainly the the running back room is more talented now than than it was last year. I mean, I, I love Motor. Don't get me wrong, and I, it's cool to see Zach Moss having some success in in Indy. But uh, yeah, I mean, you know, Murray and Harris have been have been good, and I mean, James Cook is my guy. I love that dude. Yeah, and on the you know you, I don't think enough is being made about the Buffalo Bills defensive line, and they aren't getting home and getting the hits and rates on uh, sacks as necessarily as much as the commanders are. But I do think both games now they've been able to be disruptive and generate pressures. And I tell you right now, like if you were going to have a matchup of uh, quarterback play, and I don't believe in head to head matchups, I used to hate when it was Brady versus Manning. Like that's not a thing for real, but if you were going to have a head to head matchup and say the two biggest concerns are uh, the the quarterbacks being pressured in this matchup, I'm going to take their team may be pressuring Josh Allen a little bit more, but the way that the Bills defensive line has been able to create pressure, getting that type of pressure on Sam Howell, I'm going to take that matchup all day long. I think that, you know, Ed Oliver has been super disruptive. Taquan Jones looked unblockable for stretches of that game last week. And obviously the Raiders have some issues on their interior, but these are still NFL players. They were going up and just pushing into the backfield, into running backs, negative two yards for Josh Jacobs. Like this line probably not getting the recognition really the defense probably not getting the recognition they deserve here early on in the season yeah definitely and i think you know the counterpoint to that that you'll hear is that we haven't played an elite offense yet um you know the jets and the raiders they're not exactly you know the chiefs but um 
the defense has looked really promising and I'm, I'm certainly really excited to see how uh, this continues to play out with, um, you know, the line and, and Terrell Bernard, honestly, like we, let's give him some flowers because, you know, two games into the Terrell Bernard experience, um, I'm feeling pretty good actually about where we're at um, with middle linebacker. How about you? Uh, yeah, and real quick to the the point of the defense, um, I would counter those people with DVOA has the Bills as the third ranked defense and second pass ranked defense, and they've consistently since Sean McDermott slash Leslie Frazier have been here, continue to be DVOA darlings on defense. And again, I don't think it's hard to do for such a long period of time. I don't know if they'll be able to sustain this for the entire season or not, but. Um, it doesn't get talked about, in my opinion, enough how hard it is to have a top defense year in and year out. They continue to display that for us. But in terms of the linebacker, I mean, yeah, I think he was definitely trending in the right direction after last week with Bernard. Um, it's not the concern that I had. I mean, we're still going to have mistakes and things like that. But I think what really solidified it was Christian Kirksey retiring. Uh, yeah, that was a tell. Like, you know, he, the writing was on the wall there, right? Like, he, his path to starting, the door, yes. that door closed. I hate to, to be speculative and talk. Like, maybe there is something else going on. But as soon as I saw him retire, my thought was he was insurance, right? If this doesn't work out, we've got this break in case of emergency insurance plan. And he wanted to play. He probably came here with the idea that I want to play for a contender and a Super Bowl contender. And he probably got here thinking that there was going to be a call up from that practice squad coming. And then Bernard has actually just solidified that it's good enough. And, and we could probably do some things. He's put enough on film for the coaches to trust him going forward. And they probably had that conversation with Kirksey and ultimately decided on retiring. If I was to speculate, that's where my brain first went. Is that way off base? Uh, I don't think so. You know, like insurance, insurance policy, like you said, um, <laughs> it opened up the uh, the door for AJ Klein to come back onto the practice squad. I, I, Kyle Salagi had one of my favorite tweets yesterday. Uh, there's three things that are sure in life: death, taxes, and AJ Klein getting a paycheck from the Buffalo Bills. <laughs> Honestly, we should have a uh, running ticker count of like guys that have been released and brought back because it's like Dean Marlowe is up there. Uh, Cam Lewis has done it yeah. a number of times. Like, I, I want to see who leads the all-time Brandon Bean error of released and brought back uh, for the Bills. I bet the list is longer even than we're thinking. There's probably a number of players that just continue. Uh, yeah, I feel like Eli Ankow was one. Uh, Brian, like those guys just are back and forth, back and forth, on and off. It's fun. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, they got their guys. I mean, they've got time in the system, whether it's even just an offseason. Like, maybe they've never even played in a game, but they've been through camp. Um, yeah. They kind of, you know, they're comfortable with them. Bring them back, right? Like, because, I mean, yeah. y- you know, there probably isn't a huge gap between, you know, uh, Ilyanku and, you know, other D tackles that might be available on the market. For sure. Um, you know, and he's a good player. I, I feel like, you know, when, when Anku gets in there, I've been impressed by what he does. I mean, he's not the, he's not one of the top five defensive tackles um, that the Bills, you know, he, sure. he's not going to crack the roster, but he's uh, he's serviceable, certainly, yeah. when he gets his opportunity. Yeah, the talent pool, the the margins in the talent, but outside of the top, top elite, uh, the rest of the league, once you get down to these depth pieces, the margins are real thin between the guys that are in the league and playing on Sundays and the guys that are on practice squads or bouncing around other rosters. And we see it year in and year out. Dean Marlowe could come in and play at an acceptable level, on a number of teams, be that break in case of emergency guy. Then Klein has done it for the Bills, so you're right. Like there's there's not big differences. It's more stylistic when you get there. Like I think for me, the Kirksey thing was nice. I think he presents a little more athleticism than Klein for modern NFL football. Um, you have to probably do some things differently with AJ Klein as that backup in case of an emergency. Um, but I understand, you know, from Kirksey's point, you know, it's a lot of work. And a lot of sacrifice. I know people like to make fun of Vontae Davis for how he retired or, you know, there's a running joke kind of going online about all the different guys that have stopped through the bills and then retire on their way out. I think that's one, a piece of, this is a contender. It's a team that's considered a contender. So you're going to get guys late in their career, chasing rings, chasing opportunities to be on those teams. So they're going to be more prone to having contracts with teams like the bills. And then the roster is so deep that, 
those guys probably come in with a vision and then it doesn't quite pan out or work out exactly as they see. And it's hard. Like this stuff's even Christian Kirksey being on the practice squad and being ready for it to be an NFL shape. Like that's a grind every single day. It's not just easy. They're not just sitting back watching film being coaches. Like there's a lot that goes into that to be ready to play in the NFL. The Vontae Davis thing was immortalized by that clip. Was it, was it LaShawn McCoy and Trey white that were talking about it? Um, I got to find it again. That was so funny when telling the story about when he retired anyway. Um, yeah, I think you're right. It's, it's like, uh, kind of become a destination team. Like we were talking about with certain college teams earlier, but you know, if you want to, if you're, if your choices are, um, go home, you know, hang it up for the career or, um, take a shot at making a, the roster for a contender. I mean, you know, the bills are one of those teams. Like you're not going to, uh, you're not going to like go to the Texans or something and just hang out. Like, unless they're, you know, you're going to like make money, right? Like, <laughs> right. Got, like if they've got money to spend, like, yeah, you take that job. But if you're going, if you're trying to get one last shot at a ring, like the bills, chiefs, teams, teams like that. Yeah. Yeah, no, for sure. And so it's a good place to be. Do you want to tell everyone what you're up to tomorrow? Yeah, sure. Um, we are doing the cover one watch party for a top 10 college football matchup. We've got number nine, Notre Dame against number six, Ohio State. Boo, both. <laughs> we welcome hate watchers. Yeah. You know, Anthony Prohaska is going to be on and he hates both teams. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> he's a, it should be a Miami fan, right? He's a U guy. He is a Miami yeah. fan. Yeah, yeah. The uh, the whole Catholics versus convicts thing is what turned him off. He actually used to be a Notre Dame fan, but um, that whole thing turned him off. But yeah, I mean, you know, Marvin Harrison Jr., you know, the top wide receiver prospect coming out next year. Mm. Like, you got Sam Hartman, who you know is lighting it up. He's gonna, he's in the Heisman conversation. I mean, Audric Estime is a leading rusher in, in college football right now. It's going to be a lot of fun. Um, and Ryan, Ryan Sullivan's going to be there. So if you want to dunk on him for his food takes, <laughs> that's, that's a good spot to do it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, big games like this, especially early on my, one of my big issues with, uh, watching college football is a lot of times when I tune in, it's not a great game or it's a blowout, especially early on in the season. So get a nice big one here. There's been some fun ones though. I've been tuning in, but nobody cares about my college football takes maybe i'll hop on tonight and play with you guys uh tomorrow night tomorrow night yeah, yeah. well saturday night depending on when you're listening to this right saturday yeah. night 7 30 although last night a little bit um i felt a little good seeing ronnie bell i had some hot takes about ronnie bell as a late receiver late round receiver and i felt like the whole draft community and world were just sleeping on this guy and that once he was fully recovered from that injury this is going to be a productive NFL wide receiver. And I think like there was a lot of rumblings in camp that he was looking good. He made some plays in the preseason last night. He had some nice plays. Like uh, maybe it's a Shanahan thing and he's just the smartest guy in the world and anyone works, but uh, that felt good to see when you see, you t- talk about a later round guy and they, they're doing something in the NFL early on. That always feels good. I mean, yeah, it definitely feels good anytime. Like guys that you watched and rooted for in college, like make plays in the NFL yeah. and have success. I mean, that's, I mean, yeah, especially, I mean, most of the people in here, I'm sure, um, have some awareness of the, the pre-draft process yeah. and, because we talk about it so much on cover one. Um, so there's all these players that even if you don't have, um, an alma mater with a D one school that you follow, like you probably right. are familiar with a lot of these guys, you've heard their names and so, so seeing them have success is always a great thing. Yeah. And because I'm so wrong. What, like we do so many players and talk about so many players, I'm wrong so often. That, like the few <laughs> times that I'm right, I'm gonna find a lot of joy in that. Uh, Thomas has been out here hanging out on, on the mute. What's happening, Thomas? Good morning. How are you guys? Good, man. How's it going? You've been sitting here listening to us talk about gush about the Bills. Are we way over the top responding to one week two beating of a low level team in the Raiders? No, I don't, I don't think so. And, you know, I kind of go, and I'm not, this is not to disparage the commanders, and I still can't get off the name the Redskins, so I feel like I might not have to because I feel like that's going to come back anyway. But um, I, I like what they have there. I think their defensive line has a ton of talent, right? Like, we know that. Um, we know their wide receiver core with Jahan Dodson and Terry McLaurin. 
Really, really talented. Brian Robinson's really good. Antonio Gibson is probably one of the better number two running backs in the NFL. Like, they have, a, a, like, a litany of very, very talented people on this roster. I guess my thing is, and I always go back to this kind of sentiment that there's always these teams every year. You're always going to have a team that's kind of that darling, starts off hot, and then they kind of figure them out, you know? And you saw for the first two weeks, both of the teams that played the commanders kind of did the same thing. They played a zone defense. They kind of just let Howell dink and dunk down the field. They didn't really pressure him, and they gave him a ton of time in the pocket, which for a rookie quarterback, and we'll call him a rookie even though he's not, you know, you're allowing him to process the field, and you're not, you're not worrying about him having to kind of create on the fly or, uh, you know, get out of the pocket or off-platform off throws. I mean, you're allowing him to kind of be very basic. I don't think Sean McDermott's going to do that, and I'm not saying he's going to get away from that, but I think Sean McDermott, one, they've gotten a lot of pressure from their front four, uh, which is why they have 11% uh, blitz rate thus far. But I feel like he's going to get real creative. I mean, you have two very, very talented safeties who can disguise a ton. You have two very, very talented linebackers, one of which is an all-pro. I think it's going to really – he's going to be able to deploy some, some schemes that Howell just hasn't seen yet. Now, it works both ways because of the fact that we're getting Howell so early in the season. It's a little bit harder because you don't have as much tape on him. But at that same time, Howell has also – not seen a lot thus far outside of college. So I don't think you guys are far off. I personally think that the Bills are going to win handily. I think it'll come out very similar. They might allow Howell to kind of do what he does in the first drive. We've seen that where Sean McDermott's defense will allow a quarterback in the first drive to kind of air it out sometimes or, you know, have a little bit more freedom and then they clamp down on him. I think that's what you're going to see. And what I think, because you saw last week against, you know, you know, Sam Howell had to climb back into the game. That's not going to be the case. He's going to have to keep up with Josh Allen. He's going to have to keep up with this team. And Stefan Diggs is going to have a very, very, very big game against Emmanuel Forbes. Emmanuel Forbes thus far has not had to deal with a guy like Stefan Diggs with the nuance route running, the releases, the release packages. Um, yeah, I think it's going to be a good day for the Buffalo Bills in totality. Yeah, I'm glad you brought up the point of the inexperience of how we talked about that on the show last night. Um, actually, Thomas, do you mind muting while you're not? Sorry. No, it's okay. It's just, uh, it was like rubbing against something. That's cool. Um, we talked about that last night a little bit in terms of Sean McDermott, whether it was Leslie Frazier led, Sean McDermott led previously to his time in the Bills. He's done well with defenses against young and experienced quarterbacks. And I expect that trend to continue. Like, how impressed, but. Um, I don't necessarily believe in strength of schedule predictions, right? But I think uh, historical strength of schedule is real. And PFF had them as the 31st strength of, strength of schedule so far through the first two games. Uh, I think Bills were top 10, maybe, maybe like 15th. Uh, and I think that matters, right? Who they've played. Yes, they have had impressive runs. They've played impressive games. I've had to watch the Broncos. I know everyone that does content getting ready for the last couple matchups. I've had to watch the Broncos twice now. Like it, 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 Maybe they will be an okay, fine football team. It hasn't been so far. It hasn't looked good. So that's not impressive. The Cardinals beating Cardinals doesn't impress me. So I've had a tough time totally figuring out who this commander's team is led by Sam Howell. And I think for that, their fans and for the national media, the Bills coming into town stack up with such a good offense, such a good defense that I think this is going to be the real test for like, who is Sam Howell early right now in his career? Like who is this team? Are they really a playoff contending team? Can they beat good teams with good quarterbacks and good defensive coordinators? That's going to be the test for them. And my money would be on Sean McDermott to, to your point, Thomas, to show him some looks, show him some things, some blitzes packages that he hasn't seen. Maybe, Having Ron Rivera in your ear will help in, in knowing what Sean McDermott's going to draw up, but seeing it on the field is a totally different experience than seeing it in the film room. Yeah, I I think it's just one of those matchups that is going to work in the Bills' favor. Uh, I'm not, not to say I'm not terrified, and Whittle down there actually clarified for me yesterday, this is the same defensive line we played in 2021, to the T, all four of them. And we did well. We won by 23 points last time. So this is not 
this is not a world beater of a team. Yeah, they're getting better. Chase Young is healthier, obviously, and he's you know shown thus far this season that he's doing well. But the Bills have been capable of playing teams like this before. And I, I liked what you mentioned earlier, kind of the the bugaboo that the Jets are for the Bills. You know, there are teams sometimes. I mean, you said this last week that the Giants were the bugaboo for Tom Brady. You know, we saw certain teams that just could not do well against certain teams or quarterbacks or whatnot. And I I don't think it's – I think it's just the Jets, man. The Jets somehow get in his head, Josh's head, and kind of get him a little off tilt. I think this matchup is perfect for the Bills. I think it's uh, it's another matchup where they're going to just do what they do. That's all it's going to come down to is Josh focusing on what he needs to do best, which we saw through the first two weeks minus a couple hiccups. He's doing exactly that. I mean, as one of the highest completion percentages of any quarterback in the NFL right now. Um, their yards per run is one of the highest in the NFL. James Cook is a revelation to start the season. Uh, I think we're going to see an uptick again in Dalton Kincaid. His um, target share has continued to go up for the first two weeks. I, I, I think you're just going to see an offense that's more diversified against not a bad uh, commander's defense or secondary, but an inexperienced commander's secondary. So, um, and I liked what, what Hansel said, Uber Hansen down there. Um, you'd stack two, you know, whether you put Kincaid and Gabe Davis, uh, St. Juice is going to have to make a kind of a business decision as to who he's going to go after, which is going to leave some open opportunities. I think the Bills can exploit the, the, the commander's defense. And I think the commander or the Bills defense can really, you know, play some trickery uh, into Sam Howell to, you know, making some mistakes. Uh, d Rum, what's going on? As I see you there, you, the floor is yours, man. Yeah, what's up, guys? Uh, so, Thomas, I, w- I do want to say I completely agree with you as far as uh, McDermott and the defense. Uh, how many times – it seems like there's at least two times every year where it's either a rookie or a backup that has a good game with a little bit of – with not a lot of experience. Uh, they get overhyped and they come to Buffalo and – throw a couple interceptions and, and just look like a completely different player. So I do agree with that. Um, the one concern I have as far as our offense uh, is the lack of Dawson Knox. I think if Dawson Knox doesn't play in this game, I think a lot of people uh, may not appreciate the impact of the 12 personnel look and the impact on the running game. Uh, I, I'm concerned that it will make us a little bit one-dimensional, potentially. Uh, The run game won't look as good, and we'll be trying to air it out a little more. So I wouldn't be surprised if, you know, this game goes to be, you know, the under. Uh, I do think we win by at least a touchdown. Um, But what are your thoughts on that, Aaron? I think in the matchup preview, Chris might remember, I think I also had it at the under, but I had the Bills by 10. Yeah, you had the under, I believe you said 24-13. 24, so yeah, the Bills by 11, but still on the under. So I, I think that's reasonable that, um, you know, maybe it's not a 38-10 to 10 type of game. I think that the, I do believe that the Commanders are more talented than the Raiders and will force Josh to make a little bit more. But I don't think he'll be able to just sit back there and dink and dunk that. There'll be more pressure. Some of those plays will will come to fruition here. Um, Tommy G, and then we also got to get Caleb in here. It looks like uh, a Commander's fan himself, so we'll get you guys hey, going in here. Hey, What's up? Aaron. Hey, Chris. Hey, Thomas. Um, I had a question. Um, if if if, if, um, if Dawson Knox practices his limited form, do you all think he plays? I don't know, man. I had heard that it wasn't going to be that big of a deal injury wise, but um, I do think that this, again, I I don't want to sound disrespectful to the banners. Like I do respect them as a team, but if you were um, picking games where you're going to miss contributors, I would think that this would be a game where you could probably build in some rest for Knox if it's even close. Right. Like, um, if you were going to drop a game, this is the one to drop, right? Like uh, NFC type game, you're going to have one of those hiccups on your radar. This is one of those ones that you can live with. And so that to me would present an opportunity to rest some guys that maybe are on the fence. Um, uh, yeah. not, not that games aren't important. I'm not trying to say anything into that nature, but I think you can get right. through this game without Knox. Yeah. That's what I was thinking. So I think it could be like a Kincaid type game. That would be, I mean, and 
to what Chris and I were talking about earlier and our guest Josh Taylor talking about that middle of the field from the commanders mm-hmm. probably presents some opportunities for it uh, attacking yeah. there anyway. And then to your point, if it's not Knox taking those five, six additional targets, maybe mm-hmm. three or four of those head Kincaid's way. And that's the difference yep. between like, okay, he's kind of productive and holy cow, this is a big game from a young and, guy. And maybe you could see more Sherfield as well with Knox right. out too. Right. Um, and we got Caleb here, uh, who's been patiently waiting again, uh, not just bills here. We got some commanders guys in here. So Caleb, what's going on? What do you got for us? What's up? What's up? Y'all hope you have a good morning. Um, I just wanted to correct somebody up here. I think it was Thomas who said the same front four chat played two years ago. Yeah, I did put up 40, but that front four is not the same. Um, cause you faced Deron Payne, who was just a run stopper. Now he's a pass rusher. So we have four guys that can rush the pass, the, um, the quarterback, at a at a good rate this year. And I know um, this year for the Bills, too, I think y'all were top five in Havoc rate as far as defensive line. So y'all pass rush has been pretty good, too. Yeah. Um, yeah. Th- this is an interesting match. It's a good matchup to me. Um, I said also in previous Bill spaces that this is a good test for us to see where we are as a team. Um, I want them to compete. Um, don't get blown out the door at, at home. Um, just, you know, compete, man, fight. Uh, of course, I want them to win. Um, so I feel like there's always a chance for you in every game for you to win. Um, I, I got to ask you, because I asked our guest, Josh, like, um, not to make it bigger than it is, but with the the way the national media talks about the Bills, from an outside perspective, as a Commanders fan, if you guys get this win at home, one of the bigger wins uh, yes, for the this, Commanders in a long time? Yeah, the, uh, we haven't been 2-0 since 2011. Yeah. And we have not had a double-digit comeback win on the road that we did, that we had against it, uh, the Broncos since 1990. Yeah. So this is huge for us. If, if we win this game, I, for me personally, I think this team is for real. If if we beat a Super Bowl playoff content, uh, well, y'all a playoff team, no doubt. Well, right, right. Uh, it's going to be tough to. Ar- I mean, if they beat the Bills, it's going to be tough to argue that you know they've they they got something going there, right? Yeah, yeah, I I, I think so. Um, yeah, and I do like your point too. To circle back to the original point of um not being yeah on paper the names are the same as it was four years ago, but I do agree with you in terms of development, like. Even Sweat and Young, not the same players, even as they were a couple years ago, right? Like, though, everybody seems to be coming into their own and primes right now, and you're seeing that generate in the type of pressures and the type of havoc that they're creating. Yeah, the, the weakest part of our defense, I know you got mentioned in the middle of the field, it's the linebackers. That's yeah. the weakest part of our defense. So, uh, Dawson Knox not playing if he's not playing, um, <laughs> that helps us greatly. Um, because those two tight end sets can be a problem. Because I, I like Cam Crow, my safety. He's been doing yep. pretty, he's been doing well ever since he came into the league for us. Very underrated. So him going up against Kincaid, um, you know, it's a good test for him too. So, yeah, I agree. Many people ask us the best way to support us here at Cover One, and that is to sign up to become a Cover One One Pass member. That contribution helps give us the access to all the data and information we use to create the content that you love. And I think most importantly, brings you into our community of insiders. It's a great community based on Slack. I know a lot of people don't want to be on social media anymore or be in on those conversations. We bring all of it to you right in our great community of educated fans. And most importantly, you get access to our content creators. Even better than that, everybody loves merch. You get awesome t-shirts, a cool decal, and a letter from the Cover One team signed directly to you. All for $60. That gets you the entire season, next year's free agency and draft. 60 bucks. Click the link in the description. Cover one insider. Become one today. I agree, man. I appreciate all that. We got uh, Bill's Reddit nicely raising his hand. My kid learned how to do that, and he started doing it at dinner last night. My kindergartner just started raising his hand. That's kind of nice. It won't last long, but it's nice. What's going on, Bill? Right? Yeah, he'll be talking over you soon. I just wanted to talk a little bit about um, one of the matchups that I'm really interested in um, offensively for Washington, which is all of the athleticism that they have in the receiver group. And obviously they can't let Howell hold on to the ball really long and you know make mistakes and commit turnovers. So I'm thinking 
they'll probably try to like duplicate what the Chiefs have done in the past and try to get the ball out using their speed horizontally to try and like just get some wide open space to work with screens and drag routes and stuff like that. So I just wanted to hear your thoughts on, you know, obviously they got what scary Terry and Dotson and right. Um, my guy, Curtis Samuel, all super fast guys. So you know, what do you think about them being able to, to utilize like the horizontal athleticism to just create some space against the defense? I actually think somewhat that, might favor the Bills for me in this matchup. I, the way I see Commanders really staying in this matchup particularly is getting to Josh, obviously, create some toxic turnover plays by creating pressure on Josh Allen. Maybe not in the way the Jets did week one, but you got to get some. You got to get steal some possessions from the Bills. That's step one. Step two is going to be, I don't think, I mean, if those horizontal plays turn into the big plays that Tyree Kale was able to generate against the Bills, then yes, I think that works. I The Bills historically, while they've been vulnerable to some of that, they are a good tackling team, and especially um, in the passing game, and they don't allow a lot of yak. They've been pretty limiting, um, and I know that they get knocked for their tackling. Individually, they'll have a lot of missed tackles when you look at the data, but as a team, they swarm, and they're going to tackle, and they have good uh, Christian Benford he might get beat deep, but he's going to make tackles on receivers, right? Like, and I trust their safeties to come up and make tackles. So, yeah, I do think it stresses their defense in, in a different type of way, but I am way more concerned about what Dotson and Terry McLaurin can do down the field to create some explosive plays, which gives them uh, – the commander's got to find a way to not have to put together – perfect multiple perfect like 11 12 play drives because i don't think they're going to have a lot of success doing that against this defense they're going to have to steal some possessions and steal some of those big plays to get it to be eight play drives that result in points and i think that's their path to hanging in this game and all if if they're if on the commanders i'm just trying to stay within a possession because then anything can happen if you can you know stay within that one possession game at any point in this game then you can break it open at any point and Howell has the arm to make those big throws too, right? right? Like, I mean, if they, I don't think they win by, you know, doing the dink and dunk down the field sort of strategy. Like, like you, to your point, they need to win by making some of those big plays, getting behind the defense and, um, you know, the toxics differential, whether it's a, or maybe in the run game, maybe they, those big explosives come from runs. Maybe, yeah, but I mean, <laughs> we we talked about this on Wednesday. Like after seeing what the Bills did to the Raiders' rushing game, um, it's it's hard to imagine that you know. I, I know week to week things change, but the, the Bills' rushing defense looks pretty good right now. Yeah, no, for sure. I think this run game presents a little bit differently, and the Bills will still be vulnerable to some explosive runs from time to time. Um, and another thing, you know, I think that goes into Bills Reddit's point of the horizontal passing game is Eric Bieniemy's screen game. Something uh, in Kansas City's screen game, those two uh, offenses is the one thing I'm probably envious over that the Bills don't really have in their tool bag is the ability to create that kind of space for your playmakers at any point and generate an explosive play. And the Bills, that is one thing the Sean McDermott defense sometimes struggles with is those they play a little bit smaller. You get Taron Johnson out in space on screen uh, responsibilities, and he, he can get there quick and fire his gun, but if he gets stuck on a blocker out in space, like you know, the, the size of the Bills defense presents, a good team that's good at screens can really chunk out some explosive plays from the bills there. That's definitely a concern of mine and kind of adding to that horizontal game. I'm not going to be. I also wanted to add it. Uh, add, I think the screen game can be important for us um, in this game as well. Um, throughout the off season, preseason, we kind of struggled a little bit with that, but they've gotten it together. Um, our interior offensive line has been pretty solid at getting down the field vertically for our uh, running backs on these screen plays. So, it's this offense still a work in progress, but they they've been doing really well so far. It's them um, getting better week in and week out. Yeah, early returns are certainly positive. I mean, Eric Bieniemy is he's a creative dude, um, and, and <laughs> it's good for the Bills to to match up and uh, against a coordinator like that early in the season. I think uh, Uber, what's happening, man? Good to see you. 
call. So I don't know how, how well you can hear me. I'm actually driving to Maryland right now. So uh, excited to go see this game. Oh, you're going to the game? Sick, dude. Oh. Uh, yeah, yeah, I am. Um, no, I, all the point, I love all the points right now. I, the one thing I'd want to throw in, and this is probably just reiterating it's something everyone else has said, I, I just think the biggest advantage the Bills have this week is Sean McDermott versus Sam Howell. I, like, Sam Howell looks like he's on a trajectory to be a very, very good quarterback, um, but McDermott just eats these young guys alive because the way his defense plays, they, they show these open windows that these quarterbacks are just, they're going to feed the ball right there, but they're not open. A player like Matt Milano hops it, a player like Micah Hyde hops it. And that's the thing I think from the commander's perspective, they can't afford, hell, they might not be, be able to afford a single turnover this game. Like one turnover might be too many. Um, and I think McDermott's going to try to force Howell into not just one, but multiple. If Howell can control the ball, though, the commanders can literally win this game. This isn't an easy task for the Bills by any means. Yeah, for sure, dude. I'm... Yeah, it, it, go ahead, Chris. No, no, you got it, man. Well, I was going to say, I totally agree with the um, not being a, that for the commanders, in my opinion, to get out of this game. We saw what it took for the Jets, even though I think commanders present probably more right now on offense with Howell than the Jets did with Zach Wilson. But we saw what it took for the Jets to overcome the talent of this Bills roster four crazy turnovers, a punt return for a touchdown, like a bunch of other, you know, crazy Zach Wilson plays. I think it was going to take a, maybe not a flawless game, but a very, like if they turn the ball over, I think they have to make up for it with two. They have to win that battle consistently throughout the game. I agree, Hans, that they, they almost have to play perfect. Uh, maybe even like steal a touchdown, get a special teams type touchdown or a turnover there. One of those weird kind of plays to, in my opinion, um, it, it almost feels like when the Patriots were really good, I'm not comparing the Bills to the Patriots dynasty, but when teams like that or the Steelers were really good at their peak, they would almost go into games with like a 7 to 10 point lead to some extent. And yeah, I don't mean to sound too cocky, but teams would have to come out and steal those possessions just to kind of hang in the game. And this, to me, feels like one of those games. And again, it's no disrespect to where the commanders are at. I just think the Bills are in the uh, top tier in the commanders right now, to me, are where the drought era bills were, where it's like, Hey, we got some pieces. We can do some things. We've got some good receivers. We've got a good run game. Quarterback is looking good right now early, but it's questionable. Like how many times as bills fans were we there? And then your team goes up against one of the more elite teams in the league. And then you get back to reality a little bit that, Hey, maybe we're competing for a wild card here and not for the Super Bowl. I like what you said there, Aaron, because I think that's what Josh Allen provides is, for the commanders, this is, again, no slack, no, no slack against uh, Sam Howell, but they have to play mistake-free. Josh Allen, on the other hand, we've seen you can still win a game even when he makes those mistakes. The Bills can make mistakes, and his ability to keep a team in the game and really change the, the trajectory of a game at the flip of a coin is what makes this Bills team so dangerous. And quite frankly, we've seen, and more often than not, Josh can uncork a ball, and if he hits it just right, you're talking a brand new, brand new outlook on a, on a game that could have been quite toxic at that point. So, I like what you're saying there. Yeah, and, and, and one one other note, like uh, just going off the Josh Allen, like uncorking a ball, is the Commanders have a really good player in defense. I, I don't know, I miss part of this this spaces, but Cameron Curl is a stud and should be respected this game. My, my only concern from a commander's perspective is, does he start creeping forward and they don't maintain that too high look? I, I just don't think a team can really beat the Bills if they go single high. Like, Josh is eventually going to beat you deep, and if Josh starts beating you deep, the game's over. So will they keep Curl deep? Will they move him up and then fill behind him with somebody else? I, I, I wonder how they're going to play play that curl role but Cameron Curl is one of those players that could change the game just like the four players on the commander's defensive line. I I, I can answer that for you bro. Um, Our base defense uh, last year we only put two linebackers no we only put three linebackers on the field like 10 or 11 plays last year. We run a lot of three safety um, defensive snaps so when Cam Crow's in the box we rotate Percy Butler and Derek Forrest up top as a two high um, and then sometimes we rotate to a one high this year. We've been doing that a lot where we show um, a two safety look and then we drop down to um, cover one robber. So we've been doing different things 
uh, defensively, but um, if Cam Crow's in a box, we have two safeties o- over the top as well because um, he's basically – Cam Crow's a glue to our defense. He, he He's the glue um, to our secondary. He's our communicator. Um, so – Sometimes he's in a box because he's a great tackler in open space, and he's been getting better at pass coverage. So, yeah, he, he's from my research on him, like one of, if not the best, run defending safety in the NFL. Like, and he's ascending; he's only getting better. And as he starts building in that kind of that pass coverage ability, which he is starting to do, he's he's a player. You know, just talking about that all around talent, a la Jordan Boyer, like. Poyer has become that guy that can step up, make a play right in the box, can play deep. Like Cameron Curl's turning into that guy. If he has a big, there's another way the Commanders can win. If Cameron Curl has a big game, if he slows down the run, if he maybe forces a turnover, if that Commanders defensive line plays well, these aren't all impossible things. Like the Commanders have the pieces to make Josh Allen have a bad game. It's just the question of how many errors can they force Allen into? Are they willing to sit back and, and just rush four and see if Allen can think and dunk down the field? Do they test him by going that single high and filling that box, sending an extra blitzer? If you do that, he's going to look for Diggs. He's going to look for Davis. He's going to look for the mismatch, especially the size mismatch the Bills have at corner. I, I, I wonder how much that's going to play into it. Like Gabe Davis on, say, an Emmanuel Forbes, like you're talking about, what, 20, 30 pounds difference. I wonder how that body's going to work out. I, again, the commander's defense should undoubtedly be respected. Like, they have players at every level of the field that can, can make a quarterback's life a nightmare. Uh, like, I'm not looking at this game as one where Josh should be able to easily put up 50 points or the Bills could easily put up 50. I think they're going to try to push for just shy of 30. I don't think – don't know if they necessarily get there. But, uh, yeah, it's going to come down to turnovers. Can they, can they force the turnovers? All right, we got Allen, A L L O N. I'm probably butchering that, but uh, you, the floor is yours here, man. What's up? Well, what's up? What's, thank you for letting me speak, and I really appreciate the space. Yeah, I, I just wanted to come up and and, and kind of echo what uh, Hansel uh, is saying. I, I don't think that it, it, it's you should compare the the Commanders to the Jets. Uh, the, the the Commanders, you know, their offense is a top ten offense by multiple metrics. And Hansel uh, pointed out how good their defense is. And when you look at the advanced advanced analytics, their defense ranks in the top five and ten in a in a, in a, a lot of categories. So, you know, the commander's offense is averaging 27.5 points a game. This is not Zach Wilson's Jets. Uh, and Eric enemy is not a, a Nathaniel Hackett here. I, I don't think that whether you're the Bills, whether you're the Chiefs, whether you're the Miami Dolphins, whether you're the Baltimore Ravens, you're not going into a game against the Commanders with a 10-point lead. That is not realistic. That team is too talented. The coaching is too good with the enemy, Jack Del Rio, and Ron Rivera. And you have to uh, take into account that Ron Rivera and the enemy know uh, Sean McDermott very well. I'm not saying that the Bills won't win. I'm just saying that the, the, uh, we need to pull back a little bit on saying that this is just, you know, some seven point spread cakewalk. This is going to be a, a, a great matchup. And I, I'm looking forward to seeing it. I'm looking forward to seeing the coaching matchup, uh, first of all. And then, I, you know, the commanders have the D line because they're, I believe, uh, number one in pressure rate. Top three is uh, number one in sacks. I mean, if they can speed up Josh Allen's process, processing, then, you know, anything's possible, like Hansel was saying. I think the key is how does Sam Howe handle this moment? Because the enemy's – see, I think it's a misconception to believe that the enemy's just going to leave Sam, ha- Sam Howe out to dry and just let McDermott mess with his mind because this isn't – uh, McDermott versus Sam Howell. This is McDermott versus Eric Bieniemy. Bieniemy's gonna call plays to protect Sam Howell and, and kind of pull him back in if he feels he's getting a little out of pocket. So I, I'm interested to see uh, McDermott versus Bieniemy, and uh, uh, I, I'm excited. No, for sure. I think you make some very valid 
points. I would push back a little bit on the I, – I do believe that the Bills go into this. Maybe not with a 10-point lead, but I think they go into this with a, the idea that – the commanders have to steal some possessions. I would be careful looking at advanced data two weeks into the NFL season. I think that it can sort of sniff out some liars and things uh, like, so I'm a big believer in DVOA. That's one of my favorite data sets. I use it. We talk about it on our show right now. It's not good data. And Aaron Schatz will tell you that it takes about four to six weeks before you start to really present some data that isn't, necessarily predictive but shows you who teams are right and there's no again i'm not trying to be disrespectful to the commanders or anything i believe in a lot of the players on the team i like the direction they are trending in the right way i think they're a team that's competing for i think it's a playoff caliber team in the nfc like it's all respect i just i do think the bills are in a different spot all the things you said that how the commanders can win i think the those same things present to the commanders and that right now I trust Josh Allen as a top three quarterback versus Sam Howe, who I think is probably a top 15 quarterback, maybe on the back end of that top 15. And I think the games are won there ultimately. Um, again, the commanders can definitely find a way to win this game. I'm not suggesting that this is a slam dunk win for the bills, but I do think the bills are just on a different tier right now. And until the commanders come in and win that game, that is the sort of stance I take. Yeah. I think- but- I was going to piggyback on what he said, too, if you don't mind. Yeah, yeah, go ahead, Caleb. No, I was just going to say, um, as far as the the moment, like for this game, I think Sam Howell is um, confident in this moment. Um, yeah, it's a two-game sample size. It's like three starts, but um, everybody has repeatedly been saying that the moment's never too big for this kid. Um, he doesn't – he's never flustered. He's always cool, calm, and collected, so – Um, I think going into this game, um, I don't think Sam Howe will be, um, you know, how some quarterbacks uh, don't, they're just not mentally strong or like (laughs) fit for the moment. You know what I mean? Some quarterbacks just, you know, just have that mental uh, capacity to play within these games. I think Sam Howe will be fine throughout this game. Yeah, I just want to say, I know we got uh, Buffalo Bills Reddit and Alan wants to, to say something else too, but uh, I really appreciate like all of you Commanders fans coming in and chatting with us. You guys are making some awesome points. I see you totally. down there, Howl, Howl for MVP, slamming the emotes. It's hilarious. Uh, but yeah, this is uh, yeah. You, you guys definitely are showing out better than any other fan base. It is, so and honestly, uh, I, uh, Alan wants to make a point here real quick, and then I do got to bounce. Uh, we're hitting on the. T- I didn't realize it was ten thirty, and I got to get bouncing out of here in a minute. But we'll finish on your point here, and then go through the roundtable of whatever people got going on. I, I believe Buffalo um, Buffalo Bills Reddit was having had his hand up before me. All right, Mister, go ahead, Reddit. What's up? I appreciate that. I just have some dumb shit to say. Uh, there's one more matchup I wanted to talk about that no one's mentioned yet, and that is it is the Jamison Crowder revenge game. So if you're a big gambling fan, bet your life savings on Jamison Crowder punt return touchdown. He is going to house <laughs> one on us. Absolutely. Uh, so hope for the best for that guy. I'm sad it didn't work out in Buffalo, but really I'm excited to see him again. Yeah, for real. If they get a pun return touchdown, dude, you're, I'm going to blow up your DMs. It's not good. <laughs> He's going to do it. Get ready. All right, Elon, what's your point, man? No, I, I think that a, a underplayed uh, storyline to this game uh, is, is the quarterbacks. And what I mean by that is this game to me for Josh Allen is another game that he can beat back the Jets narrative that was developed after that first game by showcasing another great performance. And, and, and uh, basically making the the national media look foolish for criticizing him after simply week one. But also from Sam Howell's perspective, when you make a comeback like they did against the Denver Broncos when you're down 21 to three, and those of us who've watched sports for years have seen this narrative play out in real time on the field, that gives teams confidence and that can galvanize a team. Specifically, when you talk about a team like the Commanders who are installing new systems, who have a new uh, owner and a new environment, new surroundings, etc. There's a lot of change happening there. And when they see that they can accomplish that by buying into the system that the enemy is preaching, because we all heard the negativity that came out during training camp of them not wanting to hear that. And they see the results of their labor. 
uh, that can add another focus and that can add a, a type of unity that can uh step up their play against the Bills. So I'm I'm go I'm I'm excited to see if that's the case because I got the feeling that 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 probably will be. I think Caleb and Al- Alon. Am I saying that right, Alon? Yeah, you are. All right, Al- Caleb and Alon, y'all, sh- you guys should get together and start a Commanders podcast. No joke. I already got one. <laughs> All right, I already got one, man. You guys are good, man. You guys- I, I, I'm a Chiefs fan, by the way. Yeah, but, he's uh, a Chiefs fan, but, but oh, all right. Yeah, hey, you I guys, got my you guys own. are good, man. Appreciate you guys coming in. Um, Spin Caleb, if you want to tell people where to find your podcast, I know there's going to be a lot of Bills fans here this week looking for content. Um, get yeah. ready for this game. Yeah, um, we have to post something uh, soon. Um, if you just go on YouTube, it's called That Team from D.C. Awesome. Um, it's uh, me and uh, another young fan. I'm only 28. I've I've loved this team since 2005. So, uh, you know, it's wow. just young fans talking about Good the for team. You, man. And just uh, also, I'm know. sorry a little bit <laughs> right. as a as a Bills fan. I know that type of pain, uh, like in a team for so long and not getting the the success you want. But um, anyone else here? Uh, I know Thomas, Hans. Anybody got some content you guys want to push here before I close this out? Uh, 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 yeah, just from my end before I lose service here. Uh, if you check my my Twitter handle, my uh, sticky post is my matchup preview for this game, so trying to break down the commander's bills, best way I can, about 2,500 words of that, so hit that with a read, um, and then anyone that's going to be at the game, I'll be walking around with my Cookie Monster jersey on, so excited to see this game in person, and uh, hopefully party at FedEx Field, not in the rain, hopefully no rain, no rain, no rain. It, it, it's going to rain, I'm sorry. It's a, a tropical storm yeah, I know, going I know. through D.C., I think, but um, if you're going to the game, anybody going, um, there's half price nachos, because it's alumni weekend. Hey! Who doesn't like some nachos? All right. Chris, if you want to plug what, uh, again, real quick, your watch party. Yeah, tomorrow night. Uh, I shared the tweet in here earlier on the on the Jumbotron, but uh, tomorrow night at 730, we're doing a watch party for Notre Dame versus Ohio State. It's going to be a lot of fun. Get the Playback Watch Together app and search Cover One. Join our room. It's free. Uh, we're going to be hanging out, watching the game. Uh, you know, we'll do some other college football throughout the season. We'll do some Sabres stuff once hockey season gets started. We're going to do a Ryder Cup final round thing if you guys are golf fans. So get in on that. Playback, watch together. Get it on the App Store and then search Cover One and join our room. For sure. I don't know if I'll be able to get in on the Ryder Cup. I'm still trying to figure that out. I got a, a golf event myself the next two weekends. Um, and so my wife might be sick of me doing golf and football all weekend uh but we'll see you can take the early shift we'll, we'll, yeah, do, yeah, the, yeah. we'll do the 5 30 a.m shift <laughs> right um cover one is excited to once again partner with the most dynamic name in fantasy football underdog fantasy if you have your one home league and that one draft each year isn't enough for you then underdog fantasy is for you all the fun of drafting your own players but without the waivers and lineup decisions best ball drafts allow you to have all the fun of drafting your team All the chances to win big with none of the week-to-week hassle. Use promo code COVER1 when signing up to make your first deposit. An underdog will match that deposit up to $100. That's $100 in free play if you use promo code COVER1. Even better, Underdog's Best Ball Mania 3 contest is going to make three players millionaires. That's right, $10 million in total prizes. $2 $2 million to first, $1 million to second, and a $1 million bonus to the team with the most regular season points. Three chances to win a $1 million. Sign up now using promo code COVER1 and take your chance at a $1 million today with Underdog Fantasy. <laughs> so anyways, you can find, obviously, uh, Cover One. Head over to the YouTube channel, Cover One YouTube. Make sure you check that out. If you like Cover One's content and you ever want to find a way to help out, people ask us all the time, how can they help us? Join OnePass, CoverOne.net slash OnePass. That's our subscription. Gets you access to a bunch of our good content, access to our community. It's a great spot, and that's really how we keep this thing flowing. Uh, other than that, you can catch the pregame show with the Air Raid Hour guys before the game, before kickoff on the YouTube channel. And then right after the game, Greg and I are going to be there for you, breaking it down, as always, with producer Chris in the Cover 1 Buffalo post-game show. Uh, can't wait. I think it hopefully will be a nice 
uh, another good football Sunday here in Western New York. Uh, I guess a good team. This is going to be a good test for the Bills here coming off those a uh, little bit of variance the last two weeks. So thanks to everyone. Again, like Chris said, the uh, Commanders fans that popped in, the people that popped in, joined the conversation, everyone listening. We appreciate you guys so much more than you know. Uh, I hope everyone enjoys the weather here in Western New York this weekend. If you're traveling to the game, be safe, stay dry, and go Bills. Go Bills. Go Bills.